So it is February 26th um, and it's I think it's like quarter past six or something and I've just had my first home visit. So if you guys have been following me for a while you know that I've been wanting to foster for quite some time. It's something I've always had an interest in and for various reasons I've sort of put it off and waited a bit to get ready and sort stuff out with the business and it finally was like I felt like it was the right time and I'm finally also 21 um, so I could apply with my local council. And today, as I said before, I had the home visit, which is like the first time they come and visit you and they have an initial conversation with you. Um, which, and I was so, so nervous before this happened actually, because I don't know, I just, I guess I'm so used to people having this prejudice towards my age and when I want to do something that people think of as like an older person's job, that I was like cleaning the house like mad today. I mean, it's, it's usually pretty clean and tidy anyway, but I was like extra, clean and tidy for this meeting um, to make sure it was all looking nice and uh, she actually, the social worker who came to see me today actually looked around the place and was like yeah it looks great, um, it would be perfect for it which is a good bonus. Um, so yeah I initially put an email in, I think it was two weeks ago on like Friday and I, I applied actually with a local, a neighbouring council because my local council has been terrible, they've been useless with it but you can apply to other councils around you as long as you're not too far away from the head offices um, so I applied to like a local one and there's a train coming now, darn it I applied to like a local one they got in touch super quickly and we organised this home visit in after I had a brief conversation with them and I told them why I was interested and they said yeah that's good to go to the next stage so this was sort of like the first big step um, and I was, it only took an hour and a quarter actually, I thought it might take a bit longer, um, I thought it'd be like two hours to really go through some in-depth stuff, but basically what she said was that was just, that would be in like the assessment process, so today is just like an initial look at why you'd want to foster and to kind of see if you would be approved, um, and I think they now go away and sort of deliberate about whether or not they think you would be suitable, but she did sort of say to me, oh you should get the application form which is like pages and pages long in the next couple of days which I was a bit surprised about I thought they had to go away and deliberate it first and then send it to you so it, I guess it could be quite promising that she thinks I'm a good candidate um, but it could also mean just, just that that's what they always say and I might get a call tomorrow or the day after and say actually we don't think you're suitable so fingers crossed that doesn't happen and it does go ahead but yeah so far today with Rika I was so like like my hair and everything, I swear I've never put this much effort into a date I've had so that was like how important this was <laughs> put more effort into it than any date um, but yeah hopefully hopefully it will be good and I will be able to I, th I think I'm going to vlog kind of like the process and hopefully it will get all the way to um, to the point of fostering but I thought I'd just sort of film the process in case it does go ahead and you guys can kind of see how it works out so yeah it's currently 26th of Feb and the one thing she did say to me as well is that once they do like the initial, uh, once you get the assessment, the application papers, what from the time you fill them in, it usually takes like around six months, five to six months to actually go through the whole process of all the assessments where they come and view you at home, talk to you about pretty much everything in your past and your family history, um, and also look into uh, like criminal records, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they have to check your house is like okay for all those times too. And then you have to go to a panel, which is where you sit in a room full of people um, and basically they see, ask you questions and see if they think you'd be suitable and then if they approve you it goes to another panel and about two weeks later then hopefully you get approved again, they, it's like a formality and hopefully that's ticked off and then you're good to go. So I'm guessing because I'm at the younger end, well I'm the youngest age you can be, I'm 21, um, I would be I would be 22 by the time I was approved um, but I'm still guessing that being at the younger end is going to be like the biggest issue for me and having had health issues in the past as well I mean all my health problems are under control now I'm not on any medication I'm not seeing any specialists um, so yeah we'll we'll see about that if that comes up and if that proves to be an issue or not but so far so good so it is Monday the 4th of March now and it's an evening hence the reason I'm like a bit of a mess um, and I've just had the application form come through which is really great so they obviously have said that they're happy to take it to the next stage which is fabulous. Um, so I was warned that this would involve quite a lot of work. Uh, I've just literally fin finished printing them out. There's three different kind of application forms here. So I've got one that's from the actual county itself which is just pages, it's 11 pages in here. Um, but I've actually had it, which is the main one, which I've had a bit of a flick through, and actually it doesn't look as 
um, detailed as I think I thought it was going to be. It's just the basic stuff of, you know, about your name, where you're born, sexuality, all this kind of stuff. Not as invasive as I thought it would be, actually. I thought it was going to go into a lot more about background and stuff. But obviously they haven't put that on here. And quite a bit of it is stuff that I don't need to fill out because it's about, you know, children under the age of 18 and who their schools are and if you have other members of your family, uh, other members in the household doing it, you know, details for them. So I can understand if there were two of you and if you had children that this would take longer, but for a single person I think this is actually possibly not going to take too long and I've got two other forms which to be honest look pretty much identical um, to each other but one of them is for the NSPCC and one of them is for the Children and Family Court Advisory Support Service or CAFCAS which is I think it's C-A-F-C-A-S-S -S. so I'm gonna try and get these done now these only have three pages actually these two so six pages in there and again a lot of it seems to be like previous addresses and stuff and I've only lived at this one and my parents house so um, there's only two addresses for me to put down. But yeah, hopefully this shouldn't take me too long. So, I'd say that took me around 25 minutes. There was actually quite a lot of this um, main sheet which I did need, didn't need to fill out because I don't have other people living with me as a before or a partner. Um, but yeah, I said about 25 minutes for both sheets. The only thing that I've really struggled with that I haven't quite completed yet is the uh, referee information. It's because I need to get the address from someone and the email addresses from two other referees but other than that I'm actually pretty much done so hopefully by this evening I'll have got that information and we'll be able to send this off tomorrow so yeah didn't really take that long at all so it is March the 8th today uh, International Women's Day and yesterday I received an email from the local authority to say that they'd got my application and they were carrying out stage one at the checks and they needed to come and visit me to get some information for a DBS check and also to do a health and safety assessment of my flat. Oh, something in my eye, darn it. Um, of my flat. So they, it's Friday today and I got it yesterday on Thursday. And they said that they had free time next Friday, 15th of March, and was I available on that day, which I am. So I've gone back to them and said yes. And in that email, I got a long email actually. And in the email, they also said that I needed to book an appointment with my local GP to have my medical check done. Um, so you have to have one of these done and actually this morning I was planning to book the appointment anyway But I got the letter in the post with all the, <laughs> the info you need and it's like quite a thick package of um, Letters so there's one just kind of explaining uh, What it is for me and what I need to do uh, in terms of getting this appointment booked I also have to give and I'm sorry I called up the GP practice this morning I don't actually have one particular GP that I see um I just go to the practice whenever I need it which isn't very often fortunately um but you've got to give them this piece of paper which basically covers the cost and says the council's going to pay for this particular uh, medical to be done because it would usually cost 160 pounds um to have the it's it's a really I wasn't sure what it was going to be but having seen the form it says I mean, it's nothing like personal like it's just got my name at the top it's like a really intensive form of things that you need to get done so they fill out part a with information about the fostering team and then i have to fill out part b which is kind of like just my family name address date of birth relationship history and giving my consent and then i think i also have to fill out this which is like do you consider yourself to be in good health and just like things about medical history that kind of stuff and then the doctor has to do a really thorough um, checks on all sorts of things, which I, you know, I guess it's important. I also have to take a urine sample, it says as well, but um, yeah, so this is the bit that I think is gonna be the biggest hurdle for me, and I don't know whether I'm gonna get approved because of my medical history, because I've had Lyme disease and I have adenomyosis, even though both of these have been under control and I'm not on any medication or seeing any specialists for them, I don't know if they're going to say, that's not enough, but you know, I can speculate as much as I want. I've got to actually go and do this medical exam. So anyway, I called up the GP service um, this earlier this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, and they said I need to just bring the form in and then they would get back to me with an appointment because I, I guess this is going to take a while and usually you only get a 10 minute appointment if you book that way, so they've got to find a slot somewhere. Um, so I'm gonna go and do that on my way to see my friend later. I'm gonna drop these off. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'd be good. They also gave me a free post envelope, which I have to put, they have to send all these back to the fostering team in. And then the doctor doesn't make the decision about whether or not I can foster, it has to be the fostering team. They have to look at what the doctor says and decide 
whether or not I can do it or not. So yeah, but in the me oh, the other thing I got in this email, so, so I've got to do this, got to do this today. The other thing the email said was they gave me a financial um, document, which basically I have to fill out all this stuff about my income, my expenditure, all that sort of stuff, which I don't think would be too difficult to me because I quite like budgeting, so I know a lot of these off the top of my head anyway, but it's, it's quite in depth about, you know, mortgage, car payment servicing, contents insurance, all this stuff, so that's the next step. Um, and I'm guessing, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be the biggest one for me of everything. I don't think the rest of it, if I get through this stage, I think the rest of it won't be as hard as this. But who knows, <laughs> I can't, you know, we'll just have to see. So it is Friday. I wonder if I'm saying so at the beginning of all these clips. That'd be really awkward if I am. <laughs> I'll have to remember next time. Anyway, it is Friday the 15th of March now. And I've just had my second visit with a... I don't think she's a, is she a social worker. She might be a social worker, but somebody certainly who works within the, the council fostering team. And today we were going over the health and safety check. I think I might have spoken about this before. Doing a health and safety check, going through the financial document. Um, and she needs to get some uh, copies of my identity stuff to, to do a um, DBS check on me, which is like a criminal records check and make sure I haven't had any um, offences against children before and all that sort of stuff, so it's quite important. Um, yesterday I actually had a... <laughs> so I, one of the things I've had to have done is a medical, and I've talked about this before, so I took in the form last week on Friday for this medical stuff. Yesterday I called up because I hadn't heard anything back from them, and I was like, okay, when is this appointment gonna happen so I, I'd called them up about it and I was really confused because they said oh no the, the form will be ready at the end of next week and I was a bit like but I think I need to come in for an appointment for this and she didn't seem to think I did the lady on the phone and um, so I mentioned it to uh, the uh, um, worker from the council who came today the lady who came today and she said oh no you should have an appointment so fortunately I think she's gonna go back and give them a call and chase up about that uh, which is good. So I was, she was like, yeah, you do need to have the, the appointment, which I thought was the case anyway. So that needs to be done. So that's the only kind of problem I've run into so far, to be honest. Um, we did the health and safety check today. I literally went around my house and put anything away I thought would look dangerous because I wasn't sure how it's going to work. But we didn't even like go around the house. She just asked me questions and I ticked them off. The only thing I did have to do was check, um, prove that my smoke alarm had been tested and my carbon monoxide alarm was tested as well. And things like blinds, make sure the blinds aren't um, you know, and need to be fixed against the wall so kids can't choke on them. The one in my bedroom actually is already, but I want to change the blinds in the kids' room anyway, um, what will be the kids' room. Um, so I was saying, you know, they're not, they do currently have these strings. They're not linked together like a loop. They're just two pulley strings, which is not quite as bad. But either way, like it's broken at the top, so I want to change it anyway. So if I do go um, further in the process, then I will definitely change uh, the blinds to that. So that was not a problem, I just need to have my boiler serviced with something else she pointed out. Um, and need to call, check my contents insurance, tell them that I'm becoming a foster carer. Um, they can't put the prices up because it's discrimination, which I didn't realise actually, I thought it did go up as it was, but she said no, that dis dis discriminates against foster kids. Um, so they can't do that, but that's fine, so I've got contents insurance. And then the other thing I have to do is check my car insurance, but that shouldn't be affected anyway, because I think I've mentioned before that I do have kids in the car, but you never know, it's just better to check. So yeah, but otherwise, like it was a really positive day. She was really like, oh, you've got all this sorted, that's fine. Um, the referrals that they sent out to like four of my friends or family members to, to fill out forms on, um, they've all been sent out. I know my mum did hers really quickly, because she's allowed to have one family member. She did hers really quickly and sent it back. Um, there's two others who I know have got them. One is my friend and one's a family friend. Um, and then the other one I've just got to check up on and see if did she get it and has she had a chance to send it back yet because they're asking me about it. Um, but otherwise I think that's nearly done. So now it's just the medical. And I spoke to her actually about my medical history and like that I've had Lyme disease and have had to know, but it's all kind of managed now with various supplements and diet and I'm not seeing any specialist and I'm not on any medication. So it's just a quick question of whether the doctor agrees with that or not. And she said to me, well, we've got some foster carers who have sort of more debilitating things than that than you do. So she, she didn't imagine it would be a problem, which was much more reassuring to me. Um, but yeah, you know, you never know. So I'm still gonna try and keep my hopes down as much as I can, but it is, it's so exciting. I'm really, I'm really getting more excited as the process goes on. So I am officially in stage one, which is when they're doing all these checks. Gotta get the DBS check done. I should get the email from them tonight because she's gonna go and do it now, back at the office. And yeah, I think that's it for the moment. So I'll give you another update when I have some more information and we've gone a bit further. 
It is now the 17th of April and today I heard back from my uh, social worker to say that they've had enough of the references back and also uh, like the papers that they sent off to check, you know, all the checks basically, DBS check and all that, that they have had back and they've looked at and they've decided they can move me on to stage two, which is really exciting and uh, somehow has made it a little bit more real. So we've booked in to have my first part assessment, there's eight assessments, I think eight weeks of assessments um, to form like the, the plan or whatever it is social workers need to do, I'll know more after the first one I imagine. Um, but the first one is booked for the 26th of April, which I think is next week. Yes, I think it is next week, um, which is the day after my medical I'm having done, which is the 25th of April. They couldn't get that done any earlier because the original appointment I was given was for last week, but I was away in Italy. Um, and then this week my doctor's currently away, so it had to be next week. Um, so I think that when I met with my social worker earlier, she did say to me that sometimes if they haven't had the medical back by this point, they do still prog progress to stage two if they don't believe there's going to be a problem. And I'd, I told her about all my medical history and like the problems I have had. And as I said before, I think it's kind of hard to know because there's <laughs> such long breaks between doing these little clips. I can't remember what I've said before, but I think I did say before that I told her what it was and she didn't seem too concerned about it, um, which was kind of a relief to me. So um, I just got to have this, but, but I, to me it's still the thing I'm the most worried about is the medical. So when that's done, I think I will relax a little bit more. Um, but that is done for the 25th and then the doctor has to send that off for, uh, to the council and then they look at it. And I think that then forms a part of uh, the stuff that the panel sees and I also got my date today for panel which is the 1st of August which is crazy it's only a couple of days after my birthday actually so I'll be 22 when I go to panel because my birthday is 28th of July so I'll still be very young but I won't be 21 by then I'll be just 22 so yeah today today was quite exciting I really I really did feel like it had progressed I don't know, it felt like a big leap when I got that email today and I've started to also think about what I'm going to do with the spare room because the way it's decorated now is fine and like I have a travel cot, I have, actually I have a cot bed and I have a pram and I don't think, I think the only thing I haven't got is a high chair but pretty much everything else like changing table, reusable nappies because I make a friend there who does reusable nappies, all this kind of stuff I already have, car seats, already got all that so in theory, you could drop a child on me tomorrow because I've done work with um, like volunteering for refugee women with children. That is the plan. Like I do sometimes get a call from them saying, hey, could you take this mother and baby tonight? Um, so the house is set up to do that, but I really want to redo the kids' bedroom um, so that it's, I just want to redo, redesign it again to make it really fun, really welcoming, make it a place where when the kids come, because I would be doing zero to six, some of them would be a bit older, they can come and see it and it's like, whoa, this is my room and it looks really special. So that's something I really do want to do and I'm starting to think about that now. But now I've got this debate in my head of when do I start doing this? Do I wait until I've got to panel and they've approved, decided whether or not to approve me and then do it? Or do I start a little bit before that? Um, because you have to have the checks done first of all, so it's a bit like, mm, I'm not too sure what to do here because I don't want to get ahead of myself and I don't know. I think I think I can probably, I don't know, I probably will repaint it and redecorate the walls at least and then the furniture can be kind of last minute because that's the stuff that takes the longer part I think is the painting. Um, and the way that I want to decorate it I think could be quite neutral in general, it could either be made up to be more childish or look older so it could still be my spare room if, if I didn't get approved but yeah anyway today uh, was really exciting and I'll catch up with you when I have more of an update just got back from the medical appointment that I had uh, for the medical exam it is the 25th of April now and oh my goodness I'd say like it took an hour to do everything they say you need a half hour appointment but I don't, I don't know I mean I went in a bit late so I think it was now but it was certainly not quick. Um, he did just about every test you can imagine. Like, I think every medical test under the sun. So obviously the, the obvious ones like my BMI, which was fine. Um, and like blood pressure, looked in my eyes, looked under my tongue, did all my you know, responses. They tap on your elbow and stuff, checked like my lymph nodes, literally everything, pressed on my stomach. Um, and everything he examined today on me was fine, so that was good. The only thing is he was concerned about obviously with my history of Lyme and stuff, which was what I expected. The adenomyosis didn't seem to bother him too much, which was interesting, because I kind of think 
I, to me, that's the one that might have the most interference, the Lyme I've sort of had for so long now, I, like, I know how to deal with, and like my energy levels are back up to pretty good levels. So, well, very good levels. I've been annoying my mum and my dad a lot recently with like, I'm bored, I want to do something, and I've got nothing to do because my business is like really flexible and stuff, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it went really well. I don't really want to go on and on about it because uh, it happened, it was fine. It was, I didn't know what I was expecting, so yeah just very thorough and now tomorrow i have but he did say it should be ready for me to pick up from the gp service tomorrow i thought they were going to send it off directly to the fostering office but i figured as my social worker is coming tomorrow i might as well go and pick it up from them uh late morning and then give it to her when she's here so that will be my next update afternoon it is now the 26th of april and i have just had my first stage two visit with my social worker who happens to be the lady who came for the first visit which I'm really pleased with because she's also young as well and she's very supportive of having younger foster carers and has been really great with me so I'm really pleased that I have her as my social worker and she's going to do the whole process so that's really great and um, she gave me this uh assessment and appointments card I kind of have to cover the front up somehow so you can see it looks like this but basically has all my information on the front and some of her information and then on the inside is just like the dates that we have visits, um, the things that we're going through, things that have been done, the only thing they haven't ticked off is my medical, as I said, it's been done. Oh, I went to go and pick that form up this morning, which they said was gonna be done, and it wasn't, so I can leave it now till next Friday with our next appointment, but um, that was a bit annoying. So that's the only thing that they've still got to do for checks, and then we've got all the areas that we're gonna be covering throughout the appointments. I'm gonna have a buddy gonna be set up and done with that, and then these are the appointments coming through. And my panel date, which is, as I said before, the 1st of, August however I thought that was actually not too far away but she said to me uh, today my social worker said to me today that actually she thinks she can be done with me sooner than that so she was going to try and get me a sooner panel date if she could which would be quite interesting um so it might actually be before then um, and she only anticipates we'll need we won't need 10 visits she only thinks maybe four or five to get all the information done because it's just me there's no kids there's no partner or anything so yeah and the only other thing she gave me today was this chronology uh, form that I have to fill in which is basically just like big events in my life good and bad that we're going to go through and so she can like talk about them in the next meetings and also panel will have this as more information so I'm probably not going to vlog every single bit of the next few assessments um who knows maybe there'll be something interesting at each one and I'll do that but uh yeah so far so good everything moving forward and today for the first time we really like discussed the age thing because I knew it was going to come up at some point um and she said she was going to go into a lot of detail about how even though I'm young, I have experience for this and why they think I would be good as a foster carer. So it's good to know that she's taken that on board because I'm absolutely sure Pamela are going to grill me on this um, and I'm prepared for that. So I did let her know about that, which kind of reassured her as well. So yeah, everything so far is so good. It's May the 3rd today and I had my second uh, stage two visit today. We Today we really went through like my entire family history so from as young as I can remember which in my case is two my first memory is from um, right up to like the present and because I'm only 21 myself obviously there's not as much life as there might be if you were say in later life doing this so we got it all done in one session um, and next week she wants to delve into a, a little more in a few places but generally speaking today was fine I, I actually found it quite therapeutic there's nothing particularly traumatic in my history I had a very good upbringing so for me it wasn't difficult at all to talk about this but if you had been through something uh, more traumatic or you have something that's really difficult to talk about in your past then you might find this kind of session a little bit tricky um, and she did warn me that some people do but in my case I was absolutely fine didn't feel like upset or anything afterwards just it was I was happy to talk about everything um, so yeah so that was really good it is the 9th of May and this evening I had my first skills to foster session which is a three-hour course and I think there's gonna be six of these plus an extra one which goes over all the um, monitoring and stuff, but I won't talk about this one. Anyway, so today I, I was kind of, I was a little bit apprehensive about going, but I wasn't as nervous as I think I thought I might have been because in my case it wasn't about what the evening would be. It would be, oh my goodness, I'm going to meet a lot of other potential foster carers and how are they going to feel about my age and stuff because I look quite young too. And this is really my own insecurity feeding into this, but I wasn't as apprehensive as I think I was because I went into this quite confident thinking, do you know what? 
I feel able to do this. My social worker clearly thinks that I have the ability to do this, so they wouldn't have taken me this far if, if that wasn't the case. And actually it was really positive, I didn't have any, I had a few people who were surprised, like wow you are really young, but nothing negative, which was fantastic. And I actually really enjoyed the evening, like it was very interactive and us feeling back on how maybe we might deal with a situation or some issues that there might be and looking at the development of different children. So. That I really, really enjoyed, and I'm actually really looking forward to the next one. I've got my next meeting with my social worker uh, tomorrow to go over some more stuff. But yeah, first day of the course I thought was really positive. Apologies if you can hear the ticking in the background. I've just got my food in the oven at the moment and uh, the timer on, but I thought I'd grab a moment while I could to do this little catch up. So it is Thursday the 16th of May. Today was day two of the um, Skills to Foster course that we're doing. I think I've already shown you in this book. Um, so today it was about like identity and life chances and things that affect you, like heritage and your identity and everything encompassing that. And then our home study that we have to do, which is like a home practice we've got to do from each week, kind of like homework, but not not so much it's it's nice homework um is we have to sort of create a, a page talking about where we live and you know maybe some pictures of us and some pictures of the house and just a little bit about us that they can give to foster children so they know a bit more about where they're going when they're coming because it must be really scary so i thought that was a really good thing i'm actually going to quite enjoy doing that i also have bought the paint and some boxes because there's a home base closing down near us so there was a bit of a sale on so I went and I bought the paint to redo the room the only thing I've got to do now is get the wallpaper and uh, obviously get the, get the stickers and the decals and other stuff for it but I think um, once I get back from holiday I'm actually going to st start making a start on that room because right now I'm not sure when if I'm going to know any more until panel about whether I actually get it or not so I might as well get on and actually decorate the room because uh, I need to do it before then anyway in case there's a child coming it's a week really isn't probably long enough to do the whole thing um, and I also need to take some pictures I want to put in here so I figured I'll get going on that but yeah so far so good um, the last foster care um, session I had with my social worker I was supposed to have another one this week but she was sick so we cancelled it but when I saw her today at the actual skills to foster she said that we're like sailing through mine so she doesn't need to like book an extra one in we'll just see how we do next Friday um, but in the meantime all's going well it is the 23rd of May and I've just got back from the third skills to foster session this session was more around like the legal framework and contact sessions and the paperwork side of things uh, which is really interesting to see I think today more than anything kind of hammered home how much of like fostering that you, you don't see when you just hear the word fostering you just think oh people look after kids you know kids in care but actually it, it is a full on job. The amount of stuff you've got to do in the meetings and the assessments and well, I've already known from this assessment process, it's quite intense. And then there's reviews on your, like of your fostering status, foster care status every year. And so much more is just involved with it that you don't think about when you just hear the word foster carer. So I think today really showed me why like this is an actual job, it, the amount of work that you have to put in with it, it was quite interesting to see. But it's also really interesting to see the sort of paperwork behind it as well. I don't have a copy of it now, but basically we had to sort of think about a situation that happened um, with a child and the things we can disclose and confidentiality, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and also like we get a pa piece of paper when a child is put into your care, which is your placement plan after like five days, within five days you get this placement plan sorted out, which tells you the things you can and can't do, like whether you can take them for a haircut, whether you can take them to the doctors and who's got permission for that. And you know, all these boxes that have to be ticked for either the parent or the foster carer that they can do. And it's a really in-depth form. I think it was like three or four pages double-sided. Um, so yeah, like it's, it, fully goes into detail on this stuff. So that was kind of interesting to see today. It really did show that sort of legal framework side of it. But uh, yeah, good. And uh, the, like, as I'm going through this process, every time I do one of these meetings, I'm more and more convinced this is what I want to do. I've not yet heard anything that's really put me off and gone, oh, don't think I could do that. It's just, it's made me feel sad, some of the situations that I've heard and the things that kids might have experienced, but it's never made me think, twice about wanting to do this process if anything it just makes me want to do it more so that's quite good tomorrow i have my next meeting with the foster care last week's one got cancelled so i will be doing an update then so i uh, apologize for the weird lighting at the moment um with my lamp in my bedroom it is currently 20 past midnight uh, and i completely forgot to do today's little video clip because i got back quite late so um well if i think back to before it was midnight it was the 6th of june today and I had two foster meetings. So I had, sorry, two foster things. I had my 
um, next assessment meeting with my social worker earlier today and then I had to go to the fostering course that I've been on for week number four. Um, so my meeting with my social worker today went really, really well. Um, she basically said she's pretty much finished doing her assessment of me and now she just needs to finish writing up the report and over the next two weeks, um, A, she needs to get my manage, uh, one of her managers to come and just see me as well. That's just so they have like um, two people that make sure that she's not um, being biased and doing this whole uh, application wrong and someone goes what are you doing um but that's really for for them and uh, the other thing she needs to do is she needs to go and meet my references um so she's going to start doing that now she said which is really good and the other thing she said to me which i think i've already mentioned is about my panel but she said she really felt that we will be done by the end of june um which is super exciting um my last uh what should we call it fostering um group like in the evening uh will be on the 20th of june i think and then as long as they can finish the report in time i can pretty much go to panel any time after that uh, so even though it's the first of august right now she's going to try and move it up and hopefully not clash my holiday but she she wasn't really sure if she could do it but she's going to try and do that so that's happening that was really exciting um and she kind of again went over things that they might say a panel might come up a panel so i could think about it but she seems really confident because i'm quite articulate i've learned to be because of I think it's just the, naturally the way I am, but also from business and stuff, I think I just naturally am quite articulate. Um, and I'm, I don't really, I'm not really too worried about panel now. I'm quite confident in my ability to put it across. But funny enough, one of the things I was thinking today was when I first started these sort of fostering assessment meetings with my social worker, um, I was really conscious of the way that I dressed and how I looked and um, like trying to make myself look older and appear really sensible and stuff. And now I'm just like, ah, sweatpants are clothes, it'll be fine. So my attitude, I've become much more relaxed and much more confident in it. And in myself as well, as I've gone through these things, I'm thinking, yeah, do you know what? I think I can cope with this. And I think they're getting to see that. So that's really great. And like I've said all along, I've had a really great so uh, social worker, so I'm super lucky on that. So yeah, my meeting with her went well, and we kind of covered a few things. Like I had some of the refugee boys, um, uh, kids that I look after, have had a very dramatic week with all sorts of things happening. So I was talking a bit about that as well, which she was like, this is great. This is all going in the report, taking kids to hospital and all that stuff. Um, so that sort of things were done. And then this evening we had our number four, our fourth um, fostering, what's it called? Oh, God, I've got the book here as well. Skills to Foster Course, there we go. Oh, if I haven't shown this before, this is the big chunky book and we're on number four, which is understanding and caring for children. Um, so that's basically going through like attachment disorders, which I find really fascinating. I already kind of understood it a bit before so that some of it was a little bit repetitive for me but if you've never heard attachment stuff before this is really good this particular week we did an exercise talking about like our triggers and what things we get really like worked up about and that's really interesting to see how each of us in the group kind of got triggered by different things uh so yeah that was that was something interesting to see but it was really this was very much uh listen to the information being told but there were still a few activities which is really great and they made sure it's like that throughout the whole fostering course so yeah today went really awesome it was my second last session today it is the 12th of june um second last assessment session and today was actually a bit interesting because we didn't really go into any detail about me um, my social worker brought her manager with her, which she told me right at the beginning it had to be one week. So I'm glad that I tidied up today because it was a tip in here earlier because I've got everything from the spare room that's been redone out here. So I tidied a bit more up, which was, thank God I did that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she came today and was just talking to me a bit about it if I had any questions, which I didn't because my social worker's been really great at answering it to me, answering any of my questions. The other thing that's interesting is um, she told me today that she couldn't move my panel forward, even though they would like to. So it is still the 1st of August and she's leaving. So she's not going to be here for my panel. So what they're thinking of doing is doing like the handover that normally happens after panel, um, doing that beforehand. So I have somebody else who I know who's going to be in the room with me, which is a little bit sad, you know, because I really like my social work at the moment, but it's good, you know, good that they're trying to plan for it. Um, so that's what happened and so I met the manager only stayed for about 10-15 minutes I'd say and then was happy to leave and then what I did today was um, watch these VR they had a VR machine which I was most I don't think I've ever done VR before but it was basically showing you these different experiences like what it's like for a child in the womb um, what it's like to be a child seeing abuse going on around you and it was really quite dramatic and you can really put yourself in that child's shoes um, and then also showing what it's like when 
uh, the child's older and they've gone to a foster family or an adoptive family and they're still experiencing problems and what the good way to deal with behaviour is and what a bad way is. That was really great to see too. So that was kind of like a modern twist I hadn't expected to come into it um, with this experience. But yeah, it was it was really cool to see. So, so far so good. And next week we're going to go through my assessment and make sure, see if there's any changes that need to be done. And then we're there, which is getting really exciting. In some ways it's good the panel hasn't been moved actually because there's other stuff going on. But um, we'll see. Just popping on to do a quick update on yesterday's class, which was week five. Um, it was probably the most sobering of all the sessions that we've had. Is it was about how allegations um, and complaints are deal dealt with. Um, but they did show that there's a structure, so an allegation is like the most serious um, complaint that can be made against you, but usually things are just a complaint and they're investigated and sorted, and most allegations are dropped eventually. But um, of all the things we've learned about, that's probably, the, as I said before, the most sobering because you kind of expect the the bad behaviour that you might see and the, the trick, you, you know the kids haven't been through a good time, so that side of things doesn't surprise you as much. Knowing the the allegation side is probably the most the thing that hits home most for you. But we also talked a bit about risk and where we risk takers or where we cautious with things like money or traveling or food, that kind of stuff. And then eventually like, what do we think about children? Um, and it's about how they need to learn to take some risk because you know, life is all about assessing different risks um, and not being overprotective of them, but also being sensible. So yeah, that was pretty much yesterday. And I'm starting to get to the point now where I'm really like chomping at the bit and I feel like, okay, I, I'm, I feel ready now. And next week is my last week with my assessment and the course. And tomorrow I have the recording day, so I'll probably do an update after that. But yeah, at this point I'm really starting to feel like I, I've kind of got almost as much information as I can have an idea of what it's going to be like without doing it so yeah and as I said before my panel is definitely for August now so once June is finished I think all of July unless it's a course or something I need to do I'll pretty much be done. Once again I completely forgot to film after the course yesterday so hence the reason we have this creepy light setting again. Um, yesterday was June the 15th and I had my safeguarding and recording session which was a long day, it was the whole day, it was Saturday and it was 9.30 till 4.30 with an hour break for lunch um, and it basically was going over everything that's required of us in terms of like safeguarding the kids so how to report any disclosures they make to us um, the official process for that, what sort of resources we could look at that talk about our um, legal requirements as carers, um, so the government websites, this sort of thing. It was also talking about the risks to children of being groomed and sexual exploitation, uh, so, and also covering the types of abuse as well that children could um, experience and how they might present with that. It's a hard topic, I think, to make fun, but they did a really good job by adding certain activities in throughout the day. Um, so the first half of the day was on safeguarding and that was done by the social worker who's actually been doing our foster skills to foster course and also my assessing social worker. Um, and then the afternoon was taken by uh, another lady. And um, I found the afternoon a little bit harder just because she had quite a quiet voice and it kind of, you had to kind of strain to, just where I was sitting I kind of had to strain to hear her a bit and that can be quite tiring after a few hours. Um, so yeah, but that was the, but like the actual work, what we're doing on recording, we got given a load of sheets, got, there was a presentation they were doing with slides, talking about um, what a recording sheet looks like and how to answer it in terms of how we need to be factual rather than give our opinion. Um, so we had some statements, we had to tell whether they were facts or opinion and all this sort of stuff, so that was quite good. And the other useful things we got was a cup, copy of what a placement plan looks like, which I've seen before at one of the other Skills to Foster courses, but we didn't get to take it home. Um, so we got the given that on this one, which was nice, because it kind of shows you what it looks like and what to expect when you get given it, and it talks all about like who has responsibility for the child in certain situations, etc. Um, and the other thing that they gave us, which I thought was the most useful thing I got from the day, uh, was this list of about 10 questions that are useful to ask when you first get a call about a child, um, things like their age, their ethnicity, any dietary requirements, um, gender, name, all this sort of stuff. So it's about 10 things on that list. Um, so that was really useful to get as well. Uh, and they, with, with the um, recording we learned about how the, uh, there's no set time that you need to record things, so you haven't got to do it daily. 
but the first couple of weeks they reckon when you have a child come into your care you'll be learning a lot about them so there'll probably be a lot more reports you'll probably be doing a daily report then but it will gradually move through to like a weekly report and then if they stay with you long term probably a monthly one so um that doesn't sound too bad because i that was initially the thing that i was most concerned about was all the reporting because i'm not good at writing um i mean i can type is no, no problem typing is no problem and it is a, a typed form um, in, in electronic form so that would be okay but just still like the thought of having to do that every day especially when looking after children I don't know who's got the energy to do that every day especially when you've got really um, tra challenging children sometimes so it's reassuring to know it didn't have to be every day but they made a point about saying you need to be careful with the information you've got if you're just writing notes in a, ha in a book uh, in a notebook then you need to make sure you're just abbreviating their names and you're not using their full name just use their initial or something in case it gets lost and someone picks it up you don't want it you want to protect that child's um you know safety and their data protection so it's all that sort of stuff that was um contained in this but it was very it was useful it was probably the the most tedious part so far we've had to do but again it was important and it wasn't that bad um i'm glad i've done it now and that means the next week is my last week of assessments so it is the 20th of June today and I have just had my last session uh, on the Skills to Foster course. So yesterday I had my last official kind of assessment meeting with my social worker. Um, I had now got one more meeting booked in because she's going to go away and finish the writing report and then send it to me and then we're going to have a meeting to discuss the report and if there's anything I want to change. But that's not happening until the first week of July. Um, but the Skills to Foster course ended tonight and it was, today was interesting because we were looking at transitions, so kids moving on from us or coming into our house um, but also moving on to adoption or going back to family and that kind of process and we also got a chance to speak to a foster, um, a foster child a, a, a child who's in, been in the foster care system for a lot of her life um, and that was really interesting to kind of see her perspective on things too I won't go into any details to protect her you know privacy but it, that was an interesting experience I think and was able to ask her some quite good questions mostly from me about school and how they were um, so that was that was useful to know um, but yeah, now I'm just, as I said before, I'm getting really excited about it. I have done my prevent and channel um, sessions, which is just an online course you have to fill out. And um, I've just got to write up, finish writing up a review on a documentary I've watched. And then I'll have the 10 points for my local authority, which moves you on to level two to start with, which will just help out, especially with the first month. What they, what the uh, foster carer who was helping tonight said was that the first six weeks, everything's like this. Um, so I think having that extra financial stability, which level two does with my local authority, will help out quite a bit because I'm not sure how much I'll be able to work and um, even though my work's quite flexible, I've got to be realistic, I'm going to be focusing on other things so it might be a bit less that month and so it might just be helpful to have that extra extra bit coming in um, and as I've got the time to do it between now and August and then once it's approved I figured well why not so that's that's now done, I've just got to send that off to my social worker but yeah, things are moving on and we're, we're nearly there now. Just, just got to finish this assessment report and then I guess it's panel. It is the 5th of July today, so it's getting close to panel, which is very exciting. And I had my final meeting, well, almost final meeting with my assessing social worker. She basically went through the review. She'd sent me over the Form F, which is what she's been writing up. And unfortunately my computer, because I've got a Mac and they don't have that, they don't have Macs, it never quite translates right onto pages. I really should get Word to make things easier, but I use pages. So it didn't format quite correctly, so I didn't see all of it. So when she came over, I had to kind of delete sections and then copy and paste them out onto a separate sheet so I could go through it. So it took a little longer than expected. But we went through that. Um, there was no real problem. There were only a few things I wanted to change around there, and that's really why she came out today um, to talk me through all this and to, again, remind me of panel. I had a couple more questions, just random things about fostering that popped into my head during the time that I hadn't seen her and she was able to answer those for me, so that was good. I can't remember what they were now, but they were like insignificant small little things. I think, oh no, I think it was like like school fines and stuff, if I can't get a child to school, how does that work? Because over here the school's fine for poor attendance. Um, and she explained that to me and said it probably would never be an issue because they'd be really aware of these things. So, that's really exciting and that's done. But today was pretty interesting actually because um, while she was around today, she actually, she told me that my, you know, she was preparing for a panel and I'd been warned before that, you know, after you've been through panel, if you were willing to accept a placement or they had a placement they thought you would be really suited for, they could speed up the process. And she actually talked to me about a child 
who could potentially be placed with me today and she sent me over their profile. I can't go into any detail and I will never be able to go into detail about these children, it's not fair on them. Um, but it was very interesting because some of the things we've been discussing, discussing, discussing is behaviours and things that children might have experienced and all that kind of stuff. And in, in your head, you know that children have been through this, but actually hearing about it and hearing some of the behaviours that they are known to exhibit and someone saying to you, we think you might be able to look up, we think this child might be a good match for you or would you consider having this child? It felt like a kick in the gut when I first heard it and I was like, whoa, wait, could, could I actually deal with that? Um, and it, it didn't put me off straight away, but it, it was quite shocking to think, wow, actually, okay, this is, this is something I might really be dealing with. That changed the whole thing for me, I think, mentally. But I did get them to send over the um, referral, which is kind of like a, a sh a online form, which has loads of information about the child, their likes, their dislikes, things that they need help with, their behaviours, all this sort of stuff. And it was really interesting to see because I had never realised you could get quite a lot of information from that sheet. Because um, you think as a document, how could you possibly get, get to know a child at all that way? But actually, they put a lot of stuff in there and you really can sort of begin to get an idea of how that child may fit into your life or not. I did decide to say no to this child because uh, they needed a longer term placement. So sort of from, and they're nine, so they need to be there from nine to 18. And I just felt like I really don't feel that that's the best age group for me to start with. Maybe in a few years, I'd be happy to take that. Um, and my assessing social worker today said quite often what happens, and should it ha actually should it happens more often than not, people will get one foster child placed with them and then that child's plan will then become that they're going to go into long term care. And that child's fitted in with the family so people go, yep, yeah, she can, she or he can just stay, you know. So that quite often happens apparently, which I hadn't really realised, I just thought a lot of people get loads through the house. So it really depends, you never know. So I could just have one, I could have several, but it was the first time today I actually genuinely saw a, a real child who needed placing and the the reason they suggested it to me is because some of the things I've been talking about that I felt I could cope with um, and the sort of style with which I would parent fitted quite well with this child's needs but like I said I just didn't feel that I was able to take them because of other factors mainly that they were long term and that they were older um, and I was looking for sort of zero to six to start with again might end up with a seven year old or whoever knows but I think I'll know when I feel it because I felt with this one it wasn't quite right and I'm be I'm very mindful of trusting my gut instinct because it is often right so I wanted to, to go with that but it was and even my assessing social worker said to me I don't think this is quite right to you but I did say to the social worker I would check because the social worker has met me as well through the skills to foster course um, so she knew me and I think that's why they were saying to ask would I consider taking this child but yeah, so today, today has been a, a, an interesting day from that side of things, but we're making progress. Form F is now almost done. She's just got to fill out the assessments on each section. It's just such a long form. I didn't realise how much was involved with it. But she's just got to fill out the rest of these sections, and then I'll see her one more time to sign off of it, and then it's my panel. Ah. It is the 18th of July, and I finally have my completed uh, Form F papers here. I actually got this yesterday, but I got so busy I got completely distracted and didn't do this video. Um, so yesterday I had my last meeting with my social worker and she's actually leaving today, it's her last day today. Um, but she's been, she was really good throughout the whole process. So I said goodbye and you know, wished her well and everything. But it's really exciting because now that this is done, it's all, I've signed it off, I've signed off the safety check. The only thing that's not been done on the health and safety thing is my boiler. The bit that I had a, had a service like a month ago, exactly a month ago actually. They found a problem, they've been trying to fix it, but the stuff's not there. So it's booked in to be done, but it hasn't happened yet. But because it's booked in, it's okay. So that was cool. Um, so yeah, now the, only, the next step is panel. That's it, I've finished all my meetings. She just talked to me a little bit yesterday more about what panel might ask, the kind of questions, how it would work, you know, when I'd find out the date, the time that I'd be going to panel, because I haven't found that out yet. She said it should be in about a week. Uh, she also gave me the details of the social worker who will be taking over from her and then the social worker who will be my social worker when I pass panel. And they were speaking very much of, oh, you'll just go, this is more a formality. So that's kind of reassured me again a bit too. As I've got closer to it, it's actually got less scary in a bizarre way. Um, I don't think I was ever really that apprehensive of it to begin with, but I think because I've gone through the process and it's been so good and quite, it's gone quickly actually. I, it's It's been five months, I think, but... I thought it was gonna feel like forever, but because there's always been something happening, it actually has felt a lot faster, so it hasn't really felt like it's dragged on at all, which is great. 
Um, so yeah, now it's just a case of getting to panel and then we will see. It is the 31st of July, so panel is tomorrow. I finally found out on Monday that it was at 2.15pm, so it's not too early, thankfully. I don't have to deal with rush hour traffic. Um, but I also got a call today from the social worker of a child I think I've already talked about on here. I'm filming several videos at once, so I can't remember what I've put on this particular one or not. But basically, I've had a call about a child. They said they wanted to match with me. This was back on like the 18th of July. And um, he... I wasn't sure if he was coming, I was pretty confident he was, so I've done the room up for it. And uh, anyway, today I heard from his social worker and the foster care who's currently got him wants him to move on Friday. Originally she was asking for him to be placed on the 18th, but because they found me, they didn't need to place him with another uh, bleh, another foster carer in the meantime, which would be called a bridging foster carer, um, just between that, which is good. It means he hasn't had to move placements, so he'll only have to move once to me. Uh, but she does now want him to move on the Friday. I think they're going to try and get it to the Saturday because the social worker's not working on the Friday. His social worker's not working on Friday, so it would have to be someone else. So if they can get it on Saturday, I think they will. But, um, yeah, so I've got panel tomorrow and then potentially a child moving in the day after. I was able to ask her quite a few questions today, and I said I've, I've filmed all this in a separate video on the details of this, so I'll talk about that later. But that's quite interesting to see just how quickly it can actually happen. Um, I filmed him a little video of like me and the room that he's going to be staying in so hopefully I can give that to my social worker tomorrow so that she can send it to his social worker. There's so many different connections but yeah I'm getting really excited now. I'm very ready. Um, I'm just really looking forward to this new chapter. It's panel day so I don't really know how I'm feeling at the moment. I've been going back and forth all morning like am I excited? Am I nervous? Is this just my period starting? I don't know because it is due any time. Um, it's, I'm just a mishmash of like feelings right now. It's, I don't know, it's like 11.20 or something. And I've got to leave here at 10 to 1 um, to give myself plenty of time to get there. And so at the moment I'm just sort of trying to kill time because I've got nothing else to do today. And that that isn't necessarily helping because I'm kind of sitting here and like getting maybe a little bit more apprehensive about it. Up until this point I've been more excited than nervous but today it's like... This is a big thing. This is something I wanted to do for so long and today is like the deciding day where they say whether or not I can be a foster parent, whether I can go into this new journey that I really want to start. So it's a big, big deal. Um, and I think that's why I won't be surprised if I start feeling more nervous when I get there. Um, I've also been warned that the wait for panel, they often get delayed, so to take a book with me, so I'm going to take my Kindle. Um, but yeah, it's just, I've been watching every fostering video I can get my hands on that I've already watched probably five times before but I'm just like going over it again and yeah I don't know just trying to mentally prepare myself again. Anyway I will give you guys an update after I've been to panel. Panel is done and I was approved yay so that is now the whole process of becoming a foster carer finished. Um, panel itself, I think I'm going to do a video maybe more specifically on because I know people probably have a lot of questions about this but it wasn't very difficult. I went there, got to the um, I looked online before and to make sure I knew exactly where the building was, that really helped as well. Um, went in, sat down, my social worker came down to meet me and also my new social worker came to meet me downstairs as well and they were both in the room with me which I was only expecting one of them to be but um, they were both there which was quite nice to have two, two forms of backup. Um, they took me down to a waiting area, just spoke to me for a bit. My panel ended up being I think like half an hour late which I kind of expected so um, went in like 2.45 and they'd, oh before this the panel chair came out to meet me and said you know we're just finishing up now sorry we're running late um, but we're gonna, this is how it's gonna work and she just explained it, they were gonna ask questions and there'd be some time if I wanted to ask any questions but it's only the chair that asks the questions so people around the table would have put their questions in but she's the only one or she or he is the only one who will be asking them to you so you're only really communicating with one person but there's a room full of people there and it was quite full in my room I think there was a good, I'd say a good eight people in there can range from like six to ten, um, but I think it was around eight to eight or nine. And they asked me kind of questions. Not, re I don't think any of the questions I was really expecting. There was nothing about my age, um, or my education, or the business really. There was more just about taking time for myself. Um, how would I cope with sort of children maybe who were not fitting in as well? Who um, you didn't feel you're making as much progress with. I can't remember them all now. It didn't feel like they asked that many questions, but my social worker afterwards said that was a lot of questions, wasn't it? So, who knows? But most of them were positive, and right from the beginning, she also told me all the positives they've been able to get from my assessment. And as she listed them, I was like, whoa, okay, they've got some good positives here, because there was a lot that they were going through. Um, yeah, so then I, I think I was only in there for like 20 minutes at max. 
came out of the room um, while they deliberated and I think I was literally out of the room for two minutes and then she came back to get me um, with my social workers, went in and she said it was a unanimous recommendation. So that was really nice to know that they all recommended me. Um, but yeah, that was panel, that's the process. And now, because I have got a little one I've been matched with who is probably moving in tomorrow, um, I've now got to do my first sort of placement plan. But I've done all that in a separate video. So I really do hope you found this video useful. Anyone who's thinking of going through the process of becoming a foster carer in the UK, bear in mind every local authority or um, agency will do this slightly differently, but this is the general overview of what happens. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it's a very long video, but I did want to go into detail to give you guys a good look at what the whole process was so you could really see what it was going to um, encompass. And honestly, it, it I know it was like five or six months, but it didn't feel that long at all because there was something that was being done at every stage. So yeah, if you're looking into it, definitely I'd say go for it, pick up the phone, because the thing that held me back from even applying at the beginning was just this worry that I was going to be judged for my age, and in the end, I don't think it even ever came up. So we have pre preconceived ideas of what's holding, what's going to not let us be a foster carer. I think the best thing you can do is just call a social worker, send an email to your fostering team, your local authority, whoever, and just get it done because it's such a great thing and I'm so glad I did send off that email back in February. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, there's more to come and I will see you soon. Bye bye everyone.